We're in this series called Grateful and Thankful. Who's been enjoying this so far? Anybody? Anybody been enjoying this series? That was very polite. That was a very polite. You're like, okay, I, I have, I guess. It's sort of okay. And this, the, the thesis is this. It's if, we, if, if life were better, I would be more grateful. Well, how many of you know that it's, it's actually gratitude and thankfulness that leads to a better life? And so we're waiting for life to get better, to be more grateful and thankful, but we don't realize that it's gratitude and thankfulness that leads to a better life in and of itself. Come on, somebody. We've been talking about this. We know it now. It's good. First Thessalonians 5.18 says, be thankful in all circumstances. And we've, we've, we've said this every week and we'll say it again. You don't have to be reminded to be thankful in the good times. It's the bad times. You have to be reminded to be thankful. And that's why he said all circumstances. It's like, oh, thanks, Paul. Uh, you're reminding me to be thankful when things are going great. Yeah, thanks for the reminder. No, 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 no. It's the reminder that to be thankful in all circumstances. And this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. So many people come to me. I just don't know what God's will is for my life. Pastor, would you help me figure out what God's will is? I know what his will is for you. Be thankful. Be thankful for what you have. Oh, that's, there it is. That's God's will for you. Should I get the job? Should I not do the job? Should I do this? Should I date the person, not date the person? I know God's will for you. Be thankful that you have any of those opportunities coming your way at all. I'm sorry for yelling. I'm sorry for yelling. <laughs> Being grateful and thankful is a choice. It's not a result. It's a choice, not a result. First little blank. Let's get the, let's get the blood flow in here. Your right in hand. Let's get it going. Let's, let's loosen it up. Everybody now, come on, loosen it up. It's a choice. It's a choice. Week one, we talked about seeing the good. We talked about Elijah and Elisha uh, both being prophets of the Old Testament and having to show their servants how to see the good stuff. Elijah told his servant to go and look out and look for the provision coming. And he had to tell him over and over and over again, no, look again, look again, look again. And then the cloud, right? And the provision came. And then Elisha had to tell his servant, you think you're surrounded, but you're actually surrounded by God. You're actually surrounded by the, the chariots of fire. Angel armies are surrounding you. Even though it looks like bad things are surrounding you, what you don't see, what you need to open your eyes to is that our God is a shield around us. He's a shield around us. So that was week one, learning to see, teaching ourselves to see. And I asked you to just write one good thing down every single day because there's more than one. I'm promising you that. But if you can learn to see one, that'll improve your life. This is not a life improvement seminar. This is God's wisdom for you. This is, this is the Bible's wisdom for godly living is to learn to see the good. Week number two, we talked about doing. We talked about sowing and reaping, about how you can... You can actually perpetuate good things happening in your life if you, if you do good for others, good will return back to you. It's a principle called sowing and reaping you might have heard of as karma. It's not karma. It's God's will. It's God's principle. It's the way he created the universe. Call it whatever you want. It's true. What you do comes back to you. That was our little statement from last week. And so this week, this week, we're just keeping it going, keeping it rolling. This gratitude and thankfulness rolling right into Thanksgiving. Come on, it's like we planned it, everybody. It's good. Um, this third week, let me tease this, this concept out really quick. Um, you ever heard someone say, well, I always speak my mind. You ever know anybody like that? I always speak, well, you know how I feel about it because you know I'm just going to say it. I just say, what's the big deal? I'm just being truthful. I always like to speak my mind. Maybe you know somebody that has no filter. No filter, no fun. I'm just telling you that right now. No filter, no fun. It may be fun for a second until it's not. Okay, when you're trying to have a good time and then no filter comes along. And maybe you're the one. Oops. Because if you're going, no, I don't know anybody like that. You the one. <laughs> you the one. You're like, I got no weird friends. I got news for you. You're the weird friend. Uh, there it is right there. Well, I always speak my mind. I always, you, you know what I'm thinking because I'm just going to say it. Proverbs 29, 11, not Jeremiah 29, 11, where God says, I know the plans I have for you. Well, this is Solomon speaking. I know the wisdom I have for you says this. The wisdom, thus saith the Lord, is a fool vents all his feelings. Well, you know what I'm feeling. Well, you always know it's on my mind because, you know, I'm just going to speak my mind. The fool vents all of his feelings, but the wise man holds them back. Someone say amen and do not look at your neighbor right now because I know what you're thinking. I know somebody who does this. <laughs> Got an itchy nose all of a sudden. It's right over here. It's right over here. 
we're told in the Bible, you need to control your tongue. You need to control your tongue. You need to control the things you're saying that only a fool speaks whatever's on their mind. So when I hear people say, you know, I just tell it like it is. What I hear is I'm a fool. I'm the fool found in Proverbs. I'm a foolish person that doesn't listen to the wisdom of God because I'm just going to say whatever I'm thinking. I'm just going to say whatever I'm feeling because, you know, that's the, that's the policy. Honesty is the best policy. Sometimes the best policy, shut your mouth. Sometimes that's the best policy. Somebody, I, I feel I'm feeling kind of mean right now. This is not, oh, I need to start over again, all right? I need to do that. The truth is, here's the truth. We all do this. We all do this. This is something that we all struggle with. I mean, that text you wish you didn't send, this week, somebody, come on, I know you, I know you because I am you. That text you wish you didn't send, that, that thing you wish you didn't say in the heat of the moment, or maybe, maybe you're, you're like me and maybe you thought you were being funny. Anybody? No? Am I the only one who does this? I think I'm so funny sometimes. I'm going to tell you a true story that I probably shouldn't tell you. It came from this week. It's, it's a little raw, but you know what? Sometimes those are the best kind of stories is the raw ones. So it's too real. You ever hear someone say that? It's too real. I don't know how something's too real, but this right here, too real. Absolutely too real. Uh, Tiffany and I, uh, we don't get in fights. We don't get in, we're pastors. We're holy people. We don't get in fights. We get in passionate discussions. That's what we have, passionate discussions, because we're holy people. We're holy, so we're passionate, and we're, we're discussing we're conversing with fire and energy. <laughs> and we were having one of those passionately, ugh, just, you know, we're looking at right now. It's like, it's too real. It's too real. We were having one of those. And you know how it is, everybody. You've you got friends or maybe you're married, been married a little while. You know what this feels like. And uh, it's, it's sort of winding down. You got over it. All right, yo, it's winding down. It's starting to lighten up. But it doesn't just get better. You know, it's starting to lighten up. So, we're, we're talking about things, and then I'm, I go in the other room, and then I come out, we talk about them a little bit more, and then I go in the room, I come out, we talk about it, and then finally, finally, it's like we get, start to be on the same page, right? Start to be on a little bit on the same page. It's not, you're not back yet. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? You're not back all the way yet, but it's like, okay, I, in, in, my, in my brilliant mind, I think this is a great time to like crack a joke, this is a good, this is good. This is good right now. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. And so around the Jones house, there's this, there's this inside joke that everybody really likes. Everybody really likes this joke right here. It's about a garment that, that Tiffany owns. It's about a, a piece of clothing that, that, that my beautiful, lovely, caring, compassionate, forgiving wife, uh, she has this piece of clothing and I, and I come out and it's like, you know, it's not like the most dressy garment. And so um, um, I call them the hobo pants. I, I call them the hobo pants. See, that's how smart I am. This is how smart I am. This is like, you're like, I'm, a, I'm all done taking notes from you. But, uh, you know, because I used to think you were smart, but you're not. I know this now. And so I come out and I'm wearing like a wrinkled up flannel, you know, and we had family photos coming up. And I, I come out in my flannel. I'm like, I know, hun. I know what we could do. And we're just barely... The, the fire is like smoldering from the, from the discussion we just had. It's like there. And then I'm like, I know, honey, I could wear this shirt and you could wear your hobo pants and we could take our family photos like this. <laughs> like it never ended. And we were right back in it, baby. Is anybody with me out there? Is anybody as smart as me out there? Are you all, there's a scripture out there. It says foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. I am that child and the rod of discipline will drive it far away. And that rod of discipline is not spared on me. Amen. Somebody, you know what I'm talking about? Why am I so foolish? Why are we so foolish? I know I'm not the only one. Come on, don't lie to my face. I can see you looking at me going, no, nah, I don't do that. Quit it. Quit it. You may not do it the way I do it, but you know what it's like to say the thing you didn't, you didn't want, want to say. Man, I wish I could have taken that. I wish I could have taken that little joke back. Can't do it. Can't do it. But controlling your tongue is is so important. Uh, why do we have so much of a hard time doing this? Like in our marriage as parents, 
okay, those little, those little heaven raisers, you know, and we always say the right thing, don't we? Don't we always say the, what's, what, what's true that God says about them every time? Isn't that right? Don't make me laugh. Okay, we all say some stuff that, oh man, why did I? And then we got to go back. We got to apologize to him. I have to apologize to my seven-year-old son. It's embarrassing, <laughs> but, I, but we do this, don't we? At work, you got a boss, you got a coworker, and you know, it's just piling up. And why do we struggle with this so much? Why can't we learn to control our tongues? There's a passage that explains really, really well why we can't. It's found in James 3. And I'm going to take a little bit of time reading this. It's kind of longer. We've got like eight verses in a row. But I'm going to just take pauses in between to kind of explain what's going on in this passage in James 3. And it's all about the tongue. It's all about our words. It's all about what we do with that. So it starts off talking about leaders and, and teachers. Not many of you should want to be teachers, but I don't want to talk about that part right now <laughs> because it's all about me. But it goes on in verse two. It says, indeed, we all make many mistakes for if we could control our tongues, we would be perfect and could also control ourselves in every other way. You know what that means to me? That if we can grow in this area, if we can grow in our self-control over our mouths, that we'll be able to grow in any other area in life. This is the hardest place. And if you can control this, you can control everything. If you can control your mouth, now that, that is a spiritual principle that could go a lot deeper. If you can control this, you can control everything. God spoke us into existence. I'm not gonna go into it too much right now, but what I really wanna say is if we can grow here, we can grow in any area. If we can grow here, we can grow in any area. Do I have your attention? Say yes. Yeah. I know I do. <laughs> that was arrogant. All right, let's move right on. We can make a, verse three, we can make a large horse go wherever we want by means of a small bit in its mouth and a small rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go, even though the winds are strong, even though the winds are strong, like that, that the words of our mouth kind of steer the ship. It's like, you could say, I'm sorry, boom. And like, even though things are tough, you could be like, you know, it was my fault. It's the, 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 your tongue is like a rudder that moves your life. Even though the winds are strong, what that means is even when the pressure's on, even when it feels like life is coming down, your tongue can, can move you in the right direction. Your mouth can actually boop, put you back on track where you're supposed to be because your tongue is like the rudder of a large ship, making it go, making your body, your life, your person go where it ought to go. That's what your tongue is like. That's what your tongue is like. Even though the, the winds are strong, you can still steer your life in the correct direction if you can learn to control your mouth. Now, verse five, let me find it here. Verse five, in the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches. This is hilarious. This is a hilarious part right here. And the tongue is a flame of fire. Okay. It's, it's a whole world of wickedness, corrupting your entire body. It could set your whole life on fire for it is set on fire by hell itself. Dang, that got serious. Wow, kind of hardcore. Have, well, let me put it this way. Have you ever said something that you had to deal with for days, weeks, months, or maybe even years? Has something ever been said to you that you've had to deal with for days, weeks, months, or even years? Listen, what, it's, what, what the word is trying to say here, what James is trying to write here is one word can last a lifetime, like a spark in a dry field. One word can whoosh, go absolutely crazy. It can burn down your job. You can lose your job with one word. How many of you know that's true? Absolutely you do. Some of you know too well, okay? One word can ruin your marriage. One word can ruin your, your kids. One, this is so important. One, it's, it's, a, it's like a flame. It's like a spark that if we don't control our mouths and it's just like sparks are flying out, you never know when it's gonna land on that, you know, really dry timber and just whoosh. It could just, you're, if you can't control your words, once they're out, you're gonna have to face those consequences. Now, this might be no surprise to some of you, but when I was a kid, I played with matches. All right, who's surprised by that, really? Nobody, look at me, just look at me. All right, of course I played with matches, it was ridiculous. Well, one day, uh, one day when I was a, a lad, I, uh, we had these, uh, a nice big box of Strike Anywhere matches. Yeah, boy, that was fun, they are fun, Strike Anywhere matches, man. That was like, they were begging me to burn the house down. They were begging me, it's like, here, I'm just gonna leave these out on the bookshelf where everyone can get them, and here I got 
young Elliot. Let's just put these matches right here and you can experiment where they strike at. They strike anywhere, man. They, they work. And so I take a, a handful and I'm like on the ground. Squish. Ooh, cool. I'm like strike right here. I learned how to do this one. I could light a match on my tooth. Zipper. Whoop. I could do that one. I could do this one. And so I'm a little kid though. I wasn't doing it off the zipper then. But when I was a little kid, I take it into the room and I'm like, what can I do in my room? And when you're a kid, you know, you, got, you draw these pictures and your mom puts them up with the, with the pinup right there. And it's just like a little drawing. So I had a piece of paper hanging. I'm like, swipe it right on the thing. And I'm holding it up to the picture. And like in a second, it was just the whole page was on fire. And then like I had a corkboard wall. It's like it switched to another one. And I'm like, oh no, oh no, one little spark. And my mom, God bless her. I know she's watching. Mom, I love you. You saved my life. You saved our house. She was, I think she was waiting outside the door, honestly. I think she saw me. And she was waiting outside the door and she's like, I wonder if he's gonna try to burn the house down. And she just was waiting there going, I have to see this. I have to see it. But she came right in, put it out. And then I had to pay money to replace something. I don't know. Or that was when I burned down the toilet seat. That was a different story. I'll tell you that one a different time. I, I burned down a toilet seat. If you can believe it. You know, the padded ones. Yeah. Uh, let me save it. I'll save it for later. I'll save it for later. Once a fire gets started, it's out of control in seconds. Yes. Seconds. Once a, fire, once a spark goes out, boom, you're out. It's, it's going. And you don't just put it out. Like when it's early, maybe sometimes. But these, this is what your words are like. They're like a flame of fire. That's what our words do. Uh, Verse seven, people can tame all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, fish, but no one can tame the tongue. It's a restless evil full of deadly poison. Now I know that sounds a little pessimistic and it is, (laughs) okay. Let me just say, you will never master the tongue. That is, I believe what he's referring to is that you can never really master the tongue. Why? Because out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. And if your heart was perfect, you'd be perfect and no one's perfect. Is that making sense? Like you're not perfect, you'll ne- you never will be, but we can always get better and better. That, now, so you, you will never be perfect in this because if you could be perfect here, you'd be perfect here and no one could be perfect here. You wouldn't need the blood of Jesus. That's a whole little gospel thing. Little side note gospel story, okay? If you're not perfect here, which none of us are, then you won't be perfect here. So no one can fully tame the tongue. You can't speak 100% godly all the live long day your whole life because out of the overflow of your heart, your mouth will speak. You can't fully tame the tongue, but you do have a choice in self-control. It's a fruit of the spirit. You can control yourself and you can, you can claim that. So verse nine, let's just get right to it. Sometimes the, the, the words, they, they praise the Lord our Father. Sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God. It's so sad, you know, and, and we do this, you know, we're, we're praising God on Facebook, you know, and then we're trashing somebody in the next breath. It's common. You know, it's common. You know, we do this. I was speaking with the youth uh, this week. I, I've been privileged to oversee the youth for a few weeks. I've aged five years in the last three weeks. I am not cut out for it, but you know what? Dang it. I'm going to do it anyways, because that's just how I roll. But I was talking to some of the youth about this is about how you know, you, you're, you go out there into your high school or maybe say your job or whatever, and you act godly sometimes, and you're godly, and you, you're like, yeah, I went to youth group, I went to church, and everything's good, and then the next minute you're like, you're ugly. <laughs> Yikes. And then everybody looking at that goes, oh, is that what that's about? Is that what all that Christianity is about? Is that what all that godliness is about? Is that what you do in there? You go in there, and you have a little political rally in there? Is that what you do? Is think about how you can hurt people's feelings? Is that what you guys do in there? No, it's, it's not. But this is our tongue and it is a crazy evil. It's a crazy evil. Sometimes it, it praises God and sometimes it curses those made in the image of God. And so blessing and curses come pouring out of the same mouth. Surely my brothers and sisters, this is not right. No, no, it is not. It's not right at all. This is not something we should ever do. But we, our culture, you know, the, the church, every human beings, we are, we are taught or, and raised up um, allowed to speak whatever we want. You know, we just, nowadays, it's like I post anything. I'll say, I can say anything. You know, it's my prerogative uh, to say whatever I want, thinking there's no consequences, but there are consequences. People get hurt. They get hurt for life. We hurt ourselves with our own words. Man, we're going to talk about this in just a second. And, and what, you, what you declare tends to become. 
Let me, let, me, let me tease this out too. What you declare tends to become, this is a, this is a, a deep theological truth, but let me just kind of like fly over at 30,000 feet really, really quickly over it. Job twenty-two twenty-eight 28 says this, you will also declare a thing, you will also declare a thing and it will be established for you. So light will shine on your ways. I'm gonna say it one more time. You declare something, you say something and it will be established for you. So light will shine on your way. So it's like what you're declaring is becoming established. What you're saying is becoming established. So shine a light on the way you want to go. It's like our mouths are like, excuse me for that. It's our mouths are like this. This is so bright, I'm so sorry. Online, that's what you get right there. I'm going to point it down now. Our words are like flashlights. Our words are like, this is where I want to go. So when I'm speaking, I'm actually going this way. Maybe you've heard this. You know, like when you talk to your kids and when you only talk about the negative and you, maybe you've heard this, this is like scientific studies that if you talk negatively about these kids, they grow up negative. Well, I'm just saying it the way, what you declare be, is becoming established. What you declare is becoming established. Why is it so much that we're directing ourselves in this way? We light up the path that we choose. We choose what we want to illuminate. We can choose to speak about every negative thing we see. I'm sure some of you saw this already, but we could choose to do this. Uh, well, well you're, always, you're always doing this wrong. You're always doing that. You're always, and eh, why are you always like this? You know, we can steer the ship of our lives, our, our, the tongue of our, uh, the rudder of our ship and our tongues that's directing our path is shining on every negative thing that you ever see. Why is it that so many of us struggle with this so much? I do. And if I do, I'm pretty normal. I imagine you might as well sometimes to focus on the negative, to steer ourselves. Why would we do that? There's no wisdom there. Instead, why don't we choose to shine a light on what's good and right? Why don't we choose to speak on, well, you know what? You are becoming a child of God. Well, you're a child. You're being made holy by his word. Uh, he's working all things out for the good. Even though bad things are happening, you can say, well, God works all things out together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Why can't we choose to say he will provide for me instead of I'm so broke, I'm so poor, everything's wrong, I'm gonna lose that. Why? Well, no, he's my provider. He's my provider. He's going to provide for me. I know he said on the head, not the tail. He's going to take care of me somehow. And even though I can't see it, I'm going to choose to declare that because I'm lighting up my path as I do this. Right there. I'm lighting up my path. This is so important. This is so critical. I don't know why we don't do this. I don't know why we don't see this more often that we would just choose to be speaking life, speaking life in these different areas. Out of the overflow of your heart, the mouth speaks. This is a heart issue. And so we need to actually turn ourselves back because even though sarcasm, dishonesty, twisting words, anger, it's not really a words problem. It's a heart problem. It's because that stuff's bound up in our heart, but it's a heart problem. But our words can be part of the solution. Our words can be part of the solution. So in your self-control, that fruit of the spirit that people love to forget, <laughs> we can actually steer our hearts back towards another direction where we're not filling ourselves up. It's like that where we're just perpetuating it. You know, it's coming back and forth all the time. So here's what I want you to do. Three things, three, three takeaways today, all right? I know I only usually do one. Well, sometimes I do. I like to switch it up every once in a while. Three things. The first thing is this. Speak life about yourself. Speak life about, start, start here. Start with you. Speak life about yourself. You need to choose to speak what's good and right and good <laughs> and right and true. And I, Again, like people struggle with this. Well, it's true. It's true. I suck at basketball. Well, you don't have to say it like that. You can say, I love basketball. It's fun. So you could be bad at it, but not say negative things about yourself. You can practice self-control. You could do the right thing. Because here it says, and again, this is like a message from Proverbs today, but it's good because we're going to grow in wisdom. Proverbs 18, 21, the tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences, we talked about that last week. You're gonna reap what you sow. So why don't you sow good things? Why don't you sow good words? Our words are critical. They're life and death. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but when I was raised, it was words will never hurt me. But I learned early on, words, they last forever is, is the true statement. They last forever. How about childhood traumas? insecurities that have been present for years, decades, because of what? Words. 
I've broken many bones, they all healed. But I, I still remember the way certain people said certain things to me. For my whole life, I'll remember that. And I need to go to freedom conferences and I need to go to counseling. And it's like, you too, I know. Words last forever. Well, why don't we start right here? So I'm saying don't add to that hurt. Don't add to that dysfunction and that pain by heaping more lies on yourself. The, the, you already were given lies. Don't heap more lies onto yourself. Instead of saying like, I'm not good enough. I'm a screw up. I'm dishonest. I'm always going to be a cheat. I'm always going to be a drug addict. I'm always going to be an alcoholic. I'm, a, I'm not good enough. To, I'm not marriage potential. I'm not this, that, whatever. Stop it. Stop saying all that stuff. As you declare a thing, it's being established. So for the love of the Lord, stop it. Don't do that. Start speaking life over yourself. Can I get one amen in this place? Come on, let's go. <laughs> Write it down. Let's go. All right. Number two is this. Speak life about others. Be the change. Be that life for others. Speak life for others. Say something that, that you like about them, something they do well. Call out something good instead of only being critical. The verse goes like this in Ephesians 4, 29. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification. Let me say it again. Necessary edification that you may impart grace to the hearers, when, when you're going to speak to somebody, is it is maybe in a negative way? Is it necessary? Is it edifying? I, I always see things as necessary, and I don't always see things as edifying. But like I'm, a t and ed edification just means improvement or teaching. So when I'm trying to make you better, but don't miss this last one: is it graceful? <laughs> Does it impart grace to the hearers? Because y'all. We forget about that sometimes, don't we? It's like, well, I'm just rebuking. I'm bringing that rebuke. You know, I'm just bringing that edification. Well, is it graceful? Because if not, you're being a fool. It's actually, it's actually uh, corrupt. Let no corrupt word come out of your mouth unless it's necessary for education and graceful. Graceful. Uh, and then this last one is this. Um, take time with the negative. It's kind of like a, a trail off of that last statement. But when you have something that you need to bring, a correction, a rebuke, something negative, whatever, take time with that. Take more time. And then when you think you took enough time, take even more time. <laughs> Do not speak out about all the negative things you see right away. Take time with that and bring it in a helpful way that is timely for the hearer. Maybe you've heard this advice. If you're mad about something, wait a day. Don't say it right now because 99.9% .9 of the time when you're mad, it's not going to land right. Yeah. It's not. It's not going to land right. And what you really want to see happen ain't going to come out anyways, but we just can't resist, can we? <laughs> I know. I know. I, I'm actually empathetic about this. I know. I, I know it's, it's so tempting to just say it right now because, yeah. But the, but the Bible is trying to teach us, man. Uh, and this, this, this last one from Proverbs is two parts. So part A, Proverbs 15, 2. Part A says, the tongue of the wise makes knowledge appealing. I like that word a lot. I like that, that part of that verse a lot. Make it appealing because negative talk is usually something you don't like, something you got to fix, something you got to correct. And if you're wise, the Bible is saying, and when you're bringing that critique, you're going to make it appealing. That's the, that's the burden of a, of, a, of, a, of a leader. Anybody who leads anybody, if you manage people, if you have your own business, if you've got kids, you, the burden, because it's easy to get up there, stand on your soapbox, say whatever's right, and then get out. But the tongue of the wise, listen up, everybody who wants to be wise, everybody who wants to be wise, lean in right now. The tongue of the wise makes knowledge appealing. That's the hard work. That's where the hard work comes in is how can I bring this in an appealing way? Because the goal is not just to be right. The goal is to bring about what is right. And the tongue of the wise makes knowledge appealing makes it appealing. Us as followers of Jesus, we have to get this. We have to get this because we cannot, we cannot continue to go down this road of, well, I'm right. So I'm just going to do this. I'm going to preach this. I'm just going to say this because it doesn't, I don't really care what happens to you. It's just important for me to say what's right. Well, the tongue of the wise, if you want to be wise about it, the tongue of the wise makes knowledge appealing. Appealing. And then the, the second part of the verse is, but the mouth of the fool bleh, belches out foolishness. <laughs> belches out just, bleh, I'm going to say whatever I want. And we, we end the same way we started. 
belches out foolishness, foolishness just bleh, whatever I'm thinking, that's what I'm going to say. Whatever I feel, whatever I'm thinking, I'm just going to say it. No filter. You're a fool. You're being a fool. And I'm looking in the mirror saying, Elliot, why are you such a fool all the time? Just stop saying whatever you're thinking, man. I, you need to make knowledge appealing. People might think what you're doing is funny once, you know, your words. Shine a light on what's good and right. Shine a light on what's good and right. It's so critical. It's so important. It could change everything. Controlling your words is potentially life-altering. Choose words of life, people. Let's do this. Let's, let's commit together. Let's choose words of, of life. Choose words of, of gratitude, of, of thankfulness, of kindness, of gentleness. Using self-control to bring about those words that are right. In this case, choosing, choosing to be grateful and thankful with your words uh, can save your kids. It, it can save your marriage. It can save your family. Because the alternative, choosing to not control your tongue and say whatever's on your heart can scar your kids for life. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm, try, I'm just trying to like let, remind us your words, they matter so much. They matter so much. This is God's will for you to be thankful and grateful in all circumstances, even when you're mad, even when you're upset, even when the bad things are happening. Not controlling your tongue can, can scar your kids for life. It can get us removed from our families. It can destroy our marriages. It can, it, can, it can get us uninvited to Thanksgiving. Come on, somebody, too, too soon? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but it's true. It's real. It's real. This is, this is real life. It's, it's nine times out of 10, it's something somebody said. It's something somebody said that was hurtful or not good. We, we can do better. We can do better. We should. We ought to be focused on this. You, you ought to come to church and hear something that you could take away right now and begin to improve self-control over my mouth but we can also bring about so much life, so much hope, so much healing, encouragement, love, all the things that we wanna see happen. Your life will transform if you could put these principles into action. It'll change everything. It'll change your whole dynamic, your whole family. In fact, even salvation comes through our words, comes through what we say. Maybe you've heard this scripture, maybe not. Maybe it's the first time you're hearing it, but Romans chapter 10, verses nine and 10 says this. If you declare with your mouth, there it is. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, there it is, the connection. That, that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it's with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. There's that intimate connection between the heart and the mouth, but they both matter. They both matter. What we're filling our heart with and what we're choosing to speak out about but this time, the mouth and what you say with your words can save your very soul. Can save your very soul. Why don't we start shaping our lives right now? Why don't we start? Why don't we start together? Why don't we practice some things? Practice declaring God's faithfulness. Practice declaring God's goodness, His joy, and, and, and just bringing forth that goodness, that faith, uh, declaring the love of, of the one true God uh, and, and just believing and speaking it out. Not just believing in here, but speaking it out and saying this prayer as we always do every week. We always say this prayer at the end, giving people an opportunity to, to give their lives to Jesus and to follow Jesus once and for all. And that's why I ask every single person to say it with me at the end of each service is because what you say matters. It's not the only thing that matters, but it does matter. Because what, what's here and what's here are connected and you can control this. And you can control what's coming in here. He's already paid the price, everybody. Just believe that in your heart and then confess with your mouth. So I wanna invite you to do that right now. And you can bow your heads and close your eyes with me if you'd like. This is something we do every single week and that does not make it any less important in this moment right here and right now. If, if you need to come back into a loving relationship with Jesus or maybe start one for the very first time, I wanna encourage you to, to be a part of this prayer. We're gonna pray. So let me just describe and, and, and paint this picture to see if, it's, if I'm describing you. Uh, maybe you used to have a relationship with God. You used to be really tight with Him, very close and used to have some, something going on. You used to be in your word or just go to church, whatever. And something along the way, something jarred that relationship. And now you are no longer as close as you used to be with him. 
And maybe you've been in church the whole time, but your heart just, something got bitter. Something, something went wrong. And you know it. God knows it. And it's time to come back into the original joy of your salvation. And I want to tell you, this prayer is included for you too. But it's also certainly for those of you who have never really taken that step to say, I'm, I'm giving my life to Jesus once and for all, right here, right now, let's do this. I've tried it my own way. I've never really had a relationship with God and I'm, I'm ready to take that step. If that's your heart, if I've described you in any kind of way today, heads down, eyes closed, I would just love to see who I'm praying for right now. Just lift your hand right now, amen. Amen, I see you, I see you, I see you, I see you, hallelujah. I see you, God sees you, I see you too, amen. Amen, I see you, yes. Amen. You are seen. You can put your hands down. And let me just remind you, God sees your heart before he ever saw your hand. He saw your heart. He, he knew you were coming to this moment. He loves you. He cares for you. He wants everything to do with you, everything to do with you. So if that's your heart, if that's what your heart is beating right now to say, I, I'm ready to come back to this relationship. I'm ready to come into this relationship. I'm asking you to let your, let your mouth speak where you even want your heart to be. Can we do that? All right, so just say this right after me. Just pray it right after me. Say, Father God, I give you my heart. I give you my life. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die on a cross for my sin. Fill me with your spirit. Fill me with your love and your goodness and show me the path. Light up my way that I should take. Amen. Amen.